David, David was supposed to be fighting a war, and he can't, he tarried. He was supposed to go back out to war, and he was just, he was, um, he waited. And while he was waited, waiting, he just, I don't know if he wanted rest or whatever. But he went out on this terrace, and on it, from his terrace, he could see this woman taking a bath. And it was a beautiful woman. And really, you know, probably just, if she was taking a bath, she was half naked. So that probably had a lot to do with his desire. You know, she he saw this naked ass woman, okay, and she was uh, very very beautiful, and so he desired her greatly, and he had power, so he sent for the woman, and the woman came, okay, so uh, whether she had an option to come or not, I don't know, but she came, and so he lay with her, and after a while she she got pregnant and so so this was tough because here it is a king of you know it's gotten this uh, king of the of of the Jews and very religious nature person has slipped up okay do we know anybody like that <laughs> so okay uh, so the thing was now he knows God, okay? He's made a mistake and he's a rich man. He has lots of women, lots of women. And so what happened was he decided to um, cover cover this up. And so her husband, the woman's husband had come in from the troop and, and the troops had come in and he says, um, uh, he called the woman's husband in and he said, listen, Go sleep with your wife, and and take some time off. Go sleep with your wife, you know, because he obviously got her pregnant. And so, if he sleeps with her and she's pregnant, he'll figure it's his, it's his kid. Anybody know anybody like that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, so he he figure, you know, he call her over and he'll think he slept with her. I, yeah, I'm sure a few women know <laughs> know about that trick. <laughs> anyway, uh, so um. So the guy wouldn't sleep with her. He wouldn't sleep with his own wife because he says, listen, you're my king. I love you. And I, I, am, I love my men. And I love this country. And my country is out in the field. And, and so I can't possibly take pleasure in my wife if my country and my men, my comrades, men that are willing to die for, and my king... So he had loyalty. He had more loyalty there to his troops than, than the king did. Because the king, David, had tarried. Now, don't get it wrong. They, you know, David slipped up. He tarried. Okay? So you have to be careful when you're slowing around about stuff. Other things can come in. So, uh, you know, uh, David loved God. And it, but he wasn't being mindful of his troops at that time. And uh, so anyway, so so this broke David's heart. And David didn't know what to do. And so uh, King David, so uh, he didn't know what to do. And he was just distraught and he's a king, his, his kid. So, and he had lots of power. So what David does, he does something really underhanded. And he tries to cover it up. You know, he tries to cover up the problem. And what he did is, he says, Okay, he says to his men, put that man on the front line, get him killed. You know, when and when 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 he, you're on the front line, I want you to redraw your men. Redraw your men so that this guy is out there fighting by himself. That must have been one fight. That dude out on that field fighting a whole damn nation. His men drew back from him. That must have been one fight. Mugga, pucking, smucking fight, you know, because I'm sure this dude he had heart, obviously. So, um, so anyway, he died. He eventually he fought the good fight until the end, and he died. And so David, thinking he was cool, so, so this was the deep part, you know. At time went on, 
and uh, a year goes by and God rolls a prophet. Now, a prophet, you got to understand, a prophet can see things. He's got like the vision of God. Okay, so that's what a prophet is, vision of God. You know, they carry God's vision. So he knows things that you can't normally see. And so, so, uh, so, so, but he knows it through God, whether God shows him, tells him or whatever, you know, but he knows this. And so, uh, so he goes to David and he says, he says to David like this, he says, I want to tell you a story, my great king. And he's, and, and David had received them into his court. No problem. He's very honored. He's a great king. The, the prophet was slick. <laughs> he says, uh, so he got on David's good side and they're chit-chatting. And he says, let me ask you about this story. What do you think? You're a great man of judgment. What do you think about this? He says, I had, there's, there was a, a shepherd and he had many sheep and he had all kind of beautiful sheep. And we had, he saw another man, a poor man, with um, very, very, like only one sheep. Guy had only one sheep. And he loved that sheep and he treasured that sheep. And it was his only sheep. And he treated it like whatever. The the guy with um shepherd with the all these many sheep, beautiful sheep, that all the sheep in the world, you know, he said he said, um he said, um he he desired the one man sheep. Now he got all the sheep he could he could the man was so blessed he could have even Ask God for his own another sheep of his own. He asked him. He said, "You know, look, I got this beautiful. I just want one more like that one. <laughs> you know, you could ask God. He could have said, you know, just give me one like that one. And God would have sent him something like it or better. But he didn't do that. He went and and you know, stole. Now that's the definition of stealing to me. When you already got yours." You know, you got plenty of what it has, and, and then you go and take more. There's a difference between if you ain't got nothing, <laughs> and you see an apple on the street, and you just want an apple to eat because you're starving. To me, that's not really stealing. I'm sorry. You know, you can say, yeah, it belongs to somebody else, but they're not doing it out of just to take thievery. You know, they're not doing it for that reason, you know. So I don't, you know, as a judge, if I was sitting on the on the court, Supreme Court, and and you know somebody got a million dollars, and they needed the a million more, they stole a million more. That's different, you know, uh, to me, you know, when you already got and you just take it, you know, that's different, you know. There's also a difference if you're like a drug addict, you know. There's those there's you know you have to weigh the situation, but anyway. Uh, so he says to uh, David, he says, you know, uh, so so David says to the man, the man has all these beautiful shit. This is David. The man has all this beauty. So, so, so that, that prophet asks him, what do you think of this king? And he says, um, oh, that man has so many beautiful sheep, sheep, but yet he stole another man who only had one precious sheep to him and, and left the man with nothing. He said, that man should be put to death. That's what David said. <laughs> that man should be put to death. His own words. Okay? So, so the prophet said, that man is you, my, my king. And then David realized, oh, what was going down? He realized that the story was about him. And so he says, he says, you know, and God has sent me to judge you. And so he says, and you are judged by your own words. 